Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a complete beginner's guide to Hades, shall we, here in 2023. Hades is a phenomenal game. I got it the day it came out, and uh, I played it a ton a few years ago, a couple years ago, I should say, and absolutely loved it. I felt like playing it again, but I thought, why not start from the beginning and help some new people or people having difficulty with the beginning portion of the game get into Hades because it really is a game that is very difficult, very punishing, but once you get a foothold and can understand some of the basics and start unlocking some of the mechanisms to make your life easier, the game becomes so much more fun. This is a game that I played on stream. I have a complete let's play of the game. I believe I beat it three times on camera and um, I'm by no means an expert. And by what I mean to show you is like a person like me who is not very great at action games can still beat this game with a little bit of practice and a little bit of building up your character because this game is a rogue light. It's an action rogue light. What that means is every time you die, yes, you wipe, you need to start again, and there's procedural generation and randomization of drops, items, choices that make the replayability of the game phenomenal, but it's a light because you do have an underlying system of progress that you build upon to make yourself incrementally stronger so that the game becomes easier for you at the beginning because you have an advantage. So with the proper building of your progression system, the development of your character, and the mastering of the controls, you can really, really make a run at the game and see some of the later content and enjoy it. So in this complete beginner's guide, what I'm going to do is just fire up a brand new save and I'm going to talk you through the basics of the controls, the UI, how to play, tips and tricks, strategies, and explain my entire thought process as, as I go and make choices about uh, which boons I select and which weapon I use, which path I take, things like that. But I'm not going to spoil this game. I'm not going to tell you the fastest way to beat it, the best possible ultimate build or anything like that, or reveal what happens as you go, but instead do a non-spoilery play-along style guide so you can boot it up and play with me, or you can watch and see if this is the kind of game you'd be interested in getting. So here we go. We'll fire up a brand new save, and we're not going to play on hell mode. We're just going to play on basic. Few tales are told of Hades, whose very name inspires fear and penitence, reminding us of the inevitable fate which we all share. I, however, mean to tell you such a tale. Listen carefully. Goodbye, Father. All right, so once you get into the game, you're going to be struck, at least like I was, by the amazing art style, the fantastic voice acting, and just the slick presentation of it all. Now, I'm playing the game on PC using a gamepad. There's many ways to play this game. You can play it on Switch. You can play it on just about everything at this point. Uh, but I just wanted to tell you what I was doing. So let's kind of talk about where we're at. We're just starting out for the first time on this bridge that you'll see many, many times uh, before we get into the main game. And at the bottom left of the heads-up display, you're going to see my health bar. I have 50 hit points out of 50, and I have a magical red gem, which we'll talk about when it becomes important. I'm moving around with the left stick, okay? I can kind of dash ahead with the A button. I can slash my sword with the X button, doing a light attack, and the Y button does this kind of heavier attack. And... I can use my kind of magical ability, there we go, by using the B button to kind of throw my gem forward. And you'll see that I have one of one of these. And as I throw it, okay, it 
goes out in the field, and that prism is just dancing over there, and I have zero out of one, meaning I can't do my magic anymore. If I try to use um, push the B button, it says you don't have it. You have to actually go over and pick it up. So that's a system that's put in place in the game to kind of slow you down from just jamming on with the magic. All right, and I'm going to kind of dash forward, and you could break these pots, as you can see, everywhere. All of these pots you can bust up. You can interact with the environment. Actually, you know, as I hit these pillars and things drop down, these environmental hazards you can use to impact uh, your enemies and exploit the environment. That's something you want to do in this game all the time is use the environment to your advantage as well as beware of the environment so that you don't step into a trap or corner yourself or do other irreparable harm to our good friend. All right, let's go ahead and get up to the door. Now, when you get to a doorway, you're going to see a circular gem and it will have an icon within it that is going to tell you which god or goddess or other benefit you will get from choosing this door amongst others. Now, at this stage, there is only one choice to make, so we're going to push the right bumper to proceed. And we go through the door, and what this means is, in this next chamber, if we can clear this, we will gain the favor or the reward that was promised on the doorway itself. So this game is very much about choosing which benefit you want. Look at this big club guy. Okay, so uh, let me pause the game to talk about this because he's going to keep attacking me. This giant guy has a health bar that you can see above him that indicates how much life he has left. You also see how I threw my magical gem into him, and um, he has basically gained possession of it. So I can't actually pick that back up until I kill that guy or I knock it out of him in some way. And so what that means is, um, as long as that guy's alive, I'm not doing any more magic, okay? So that's fine. My ranged ability is gone. I'm going to need to just beat this guy with my sword. Now, he's really slow. You can see him, okay? And you can just run around this guy. He actually flashes before he attacks to indicate to you, like, hey, I'm about to swing this big club with mace points on it. And look, he actually, over time, dropped my gem for me, okay? So you kill the guy and you get it back, or over time, he will just drop it. And you pick it up, and then we can get it back. And I can just kind of hold down the B button to aim, and then eventually, after time has passed, it will just fire that. And I can hit him in the face. You can see my sword attack is doing 20 damage with the light attack. And let's just go ahead and run around this guy. Let him attack. And then the big attack did 50 damage right there. Pick up my magic, and oh my god, there's two of them. All right. So you see how I did the big attack, and it had like a little bit of a knockback effect on the enemy? He's kind of like reeling a little bit. And we killed that guy. And take your time. Learn the controls. Learn the timing, okay? I actually threw my magic after I hit him with my sword. By the way, um, it's not really called magic, and it's not really called gem. That's just what I call it personally. Um, there is an actual terminology <laughs> that we'll get to in a moment. I just have very basic names for things in my own mind. All right, I'm going to shoot this guy with my magic gem, and he's dead. Now there's more. So this is kind of, let me pause it so I can talk to you about this without, it's kind of hard to talk sometimes and play because I don't want to get hit. This is how this works. Enemies will keep spawning in phases, okay, as you go, and the intensity of the phases, the amount of enemies, um, the timing of it all depends on how far you are, what kind of a room it is and such. But right now they're letting this, us kind of just see some different types. Now these guys actually use magic themselves, but they're way squishier than the big dudes. Now let me see if I can replicate that, uh, what I just did. Okay. Now on the first guy, you might have seen it, but there was a text that popped up that said wall slam. You can knock enemies into the wall with your attacks to do extra damage. That's what I meant about using the environment. Oh, that guy almost hit us with his purple magic ball. Well, we've got magic too. You see how little hit points this guy has. Like one blast almost killed him. And he's dead. And another phase. Okay. We got a wall slam right there. 
Oh my goodness, my face. I've been struck. Now you see how I'm kind of like staggering the enemies? You can just get away with spam attacking certain enemies and kind of lock them down for a moment if they're squishy, but you really have to be mindful of the timing of the fight. If they regain their poise and are about to attack you, it's time to bail. It's time to use the A button and dash away. The dash is absolutely your friend. Also, you'll notice how I'm like picking a fight on one at a time. I'm moving from one side of the battlefield to the other, and again, using the environment so that I can not have to fight them all at once. Now that guy actually just took a bunch of damage. I think he knocked a statue onto himself. You see how his health bar is hurt there? And now we got it. And when you clear it, okay, you'll see that slow motion awesome effect. And here's the boon for us to pick up. And we can accept the favor of the god or goddess. It's got to be her. Then here goes nothing. <clears throat> In the name of Hades, Olympus, I accept this message. So... Zagreus, which is us, our main dude, gets to um, talk to somebody from Olympus, and this display of amazing courage has gained their attention, and they're... Let's see what they have to say. Hail, noble cousin. Now, let's get you from that miserable place. I'll see that all of us upon Olympus do our part, beginning here with me. All right, so here's Athena, and she looks amazing. She's got her little famous mechanical owl there now Athena's symbol you see it right there it's kind of like the circle with the hole in the middle and then the four orbs around it at northeast to south and west kind of that you need to remember the different gods and goddesses symbols so that when you're making a choice you can choose which one you want they give you different benefits based on what's in their package and based on your relationship with them. So if you start doing favors for them more, gaining their attention more, making them happy, you actually can gain reputation with them and increase the power of the benefits they offer you. All right, so at this screen, this is where the roguelike element really comes into play. You get to make another choice. So you choose kind of what doorways you're going to go through. And then when you get the boon, you get to choose which of these three, three is what I currently have, and this will augment my character. Now, these augments don't go into the section that I was discussing before about rogue lights. These benefits are only lasting for the run itself for the most part, unless they give you resources that you can carry on um, to spend in your uh, bedroom. But in this case, these are attacks or abilities that I'm going to use on this run. If I die, I don't have these anymore. So my choices are Divine Strike. It says your attack is stronger and can deflect. Okay, so this will boost our attack damage by 40% is what that means plus 40% but it also gives you deflect you'll notice that there are words that are kind of bolded in stronger white relief and those mean that they are keywords in the game and we can look these up within the game documentation or on google or something to understand them better basically attack is how much damage you do with your weapon and deflect means you have the ability to bounce back projectile attacks at enemies so it's very good phalanx shot says your cast okay so your magic is actually called your cast and it damages foes in an area and can deflect so it improves the damage of your red magic gem that i've been talking about from 50 to 85 and it gives it the ability to deflect or there's divine dash which allows your dash to actually deal damage and deflect so all of these are awesome um, of these, for now, okay, I'm going to go ahead and take Divine Strike to get myself deflect on my attack and boost the damage. The way I see it is these are all great. And you could, if you want to be more magic oriented, take this. If you like dashing around a lot, take this. I mean, you're going to dash around a ton, okay? So this is super good. And a little bit of damage, it kind of adds up. Um, but my thinking is, for now, because we're starting out, we're going to be attacking everything to kill it. And the faster it dies, you know, 
the better that is for our survival. So let's go ahead and take this. And you select one of the three. You can't hear me all the way where you are, goddess. But thank you. And we got the blessing. All right. So you'll notice as you get boons, you see how there's like an extra glimmer that appears when I slash my sword. Now, this only applies to the X attack, I believe. That your the graphics for all of your abilities and attacks change to reflect what boons you have. It's a really cool feature of the game. This is a very well made, polished and presented game. You'll also notice that as I push X, you see that I have combos. Like, so I can s just spam X, and then occasionally, you know, Zagreus, Zagreus will do like a sweep, and then an overhead chop, and then a kind of a forward skewer. So that's like the normal combo. But then you can also, co like, try comboing in your heavy attack too, to do different sequences and see what works best for you. Now this next doorway is a purple gem, and these are resources that you can spend after the run to upgrade your abilities permanently, okay? So these are good, and let's see how we get these. All right, I'm gonna go through, and oh my goodness, there's some big Dionysian dudes there drunk on their ambrosia or whatever it is they're drinking, and don't be tricked by these guys. You see they're big, ghostly-looking dudes with a chain necklace looks a little uncomfortable now this is a trap that i just walked across okay so you see a spike trap i was talking about the environment did five damage to me you can dash forward across this to not take damage but when these guys flash do not be tricked they may be big but you see how much ground they cover with their attack it's quite a lot so what you want to do with big dudes like this is exploit the environment again you see these pits of green miasma or whatever it is that's floating up here they can't go over this so you can just kind of use the pit to block them and fight them more easily now there's a guy up to the north but i'm not even going to go for that guy i'm just going to concentrate on this down here and leave him there if he's not going to come over then that's great i'm just going to try to clear the bottom of this as much as i can i also want to point out okay in the bottom right of the screen, you'll see how many Karens I have, which is the money that I'm getting, the coins that you pay, the boat keeper across the River of Sticks, and those are things you can spend as it's another kind of currency that we'll talk about, but I just want to show you where that lives. Now, on the left side of the screen, these images were kind of grayed out, so there really wasn't much point to talk about them, but you will see they start to illuminate as you get certain boons, and for the most part, you can only get one main boon for each of your abilities, for your light attack, for your heavy attack, for your cast, and for your dash. And those um, diamonds on the left of the screen represent what you, boon you have for that ability, okay? So, for example, you see on the top, my X, my light attack is powered up by Athena. Now, let's get this big boy by the way, we can just shoot him with magic, because why not? And get him, and get our magic back. And oh boy. Okay, so now we're getting two enemies at once. We're getting a club guy, and we're getting the big boy. So let's go ahead and see what we can do about... Um, just fighting them one at a time. There we go. Okay. Oh, now, <laughs> I triggered that pot. Okay, you'll see a giant explosion and the number 500. That pot, all right, that was over there, the underworld's power. that had purple, it was purple with vertical stripes, I believe. That is an exploding barrel. It's another environment treat, and you can use it to do damage to the enemies and wreck them. Here it is. Here's another one right here. So you'll see these um, that have, you know, these kind of, I guess it's not stripes, it's just like a purple and pink design with spiky top. If you hit this, you'll see the red circle with the arrows all over it. That indicates the area of effect of the explosion, how big it's going to be. So you want to dash away from that to get outside of it. Everything in that explosion gets wrecked, okay? So you can just, you know, trigger all these and use them. Now, we need to, before we can progress, we have to pick up the benefit, and we get 10 of, quote, the underworld's power, is what he called this. Felt something. And you'll see that the currency now displays in the bottom right of the screen. So above our Karens, we now have 
10 purplies. And for this doorway, we're going to get 33 Karen, uh, Karens. And let's see. You can push select, by the way, on your controller. That's at least what it is for me. To see more clearly all of your boons. And this brings up like the, the boon panel. You can see that I have the Divine Strike, but there are also all of those slots to the right where you see more diamonds. You can, some of the abilities that you gain augment or synergize with the existing ability that you've got, and you can stack them up and make for incredibly cool builds and combos. And this is where the genius of Hades comes into play. It's like taking a Divine Strike and then putting it with another power and another power. Some of them will overwrite each other. Some of them work together. And it's up to you as you play to kind of discover what the best choice will be to make you the most powerful. Additionally, you'll see in the upper right, it says that we're in Chamber 3, so you can keep track of how far you are in the run. All right, so let's go ahead and proceed. And we got another room here. All right, there's little skulls. There's traps, all right? So you can see the traps that are the plates with kind of like nine holes on them for spears to get us. And I'm just going to take inventory of the room. Now, these dudes, you can't exploit the pit of a uh, river of blood or of lava. I believe it's blood, to be honest, uh, that you see flowing around out here. Although, lava would make sense, I guess, but... Either way, you, the skulls fly over it. Now, that big boy, he knocked down that post and hurt himself, and he got himself onto the spike trap. There is no problem at all with letting the enemies wreck themselves on the traps because you still get full benefit for killing them, and it's actually 100% in your best interest nothing. to use the... Oh, boy. I was concentrating on my cast and gotten hit in the face. Oh my god. It's good. It's it's unraveling here, people. All right, there we go. He's going to hit the trap. Oh no, he didn't. He made it. All right. You want to use the environment as much as you can to help you out. Why not? Now you've seen it hurt me. Now we get 100 Karens, which is a bunch of cash. I'll take it. Indeed we will. You'll notice that I'm at 32 out of 50 health. You do not restore your health as you move through. Okay, so that is something you want to be mindful of. Now, I'm going to break these pots. You always want to break the pots because sometimes there can be money or other power-ups inside. It's not common, and usually they'll indicate if those are inside, but I just do it anyway. All right. Now, um, and you get abilities later that increase the frequency of that happening. And right now, I don't... I don't think it's impossible. I don't think you have to unlock that for for it to be a possibility, but maybe you do. I'm I've it's been two years or so since I've played the game. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and go in this doorway. It's my only choice again. Okay. And this is why the game is hard, because I'm not you see, I'm not restoring my health. So I gotta be really careful of my sweet health. Oh boy. Now this enemy. Um, let me see if I can get him on the screen. You can see in the upper right, there's a caster who's, like, launching these purple magical orbs at me. He's got my cast inside him, and you see how he has a skull with the laurel leaves on the sides and an icon next to him? And his health bar is yellow. And he has a shield icon. This is, like, an elite enemy. So he's extra strong. He's got extra health, maybe new abilities. So just... Be careful that this guy is, like, not your average dude. Alright, but did you see that? You notice how I just bounced back like I was playing tennis with the magic? That is the benefit, okay, of Athena and the divine strike that we got. It deflects, so you can just bounce these things back at the enemy. And if you time it well... Okay, I didn't time it well on the, the last strike there. You can actually devastate these dudes with their own magic. So you could stand back. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. It's not going well. Okay. All right, let's, let's be careful here. If I'm actually... 
<laughs> Talking and playing is tough. Okay, let's move over here. All right, got him. All right. And you don't even have to... Um, we did win there. You don't even have to be online with the deflect. In some games, you'll have to line it up and be, like, right online with them to knock it back at them. In this, you kind of, like, almost gather them up, and it targets the enemy that launched them, regardless of if you're online. So it's a very nice and friendly ability. We pick this up. We get our magic back. Can't heal myself, but I can fight. See? He's even commenting on that. And that's another... I think this game has... It's something ridiculous, like thousands of lines of dialogue. And it's contextual dialogue. Like, Zagreus will say stuff responding to the environment, responding to the the boons that he's got access to. And so it's really, really cool to just become exposed to all of the different dialogue as it emerges. All right, now we have a new god or goddess right here that we can try to gain the favor of if we can clear this room but as you can see oh i got hit by something oh my goodness it's all over there is no escape so i'm dead game over right no not quite not at all damn it that was just our first attempt at trying to escape the House of Hades. So we're home. What does this mean? This is where you come when you die. You emerge from this fantastic river of blood. And you get to come back to your home. Hello. And what you want to do is just talk to all these awesome personalities in here. Especially the ones with an exclamation point above their head. Welcome to the House of Hades where... Wait, I know you. I guess that means you died out there, huh? Well, don't be sad, though. Pretty much everybody dies sometime. Some of us more than others. That's right, Hypnos. Okay. And there's our dad, Hades. And there's our big doggy. So, I'm gonna pet the dog. A good boy. Cerberus. What a nice doggy, and I'm gonna talk to Cerberus. Infernal watchdog Cerberus regards the underworld prince with mixed emotions, from purest joy to deepest melancholy. That is a mix of emotions indeed. You watch over things for me, won't you, boy? You know I'd take you if I could. So, before I talk to everybody else and e examine this amazing kind of home for yourself Hades Palace I just want to say you might have easily made it further than I did in your run or you might not have made it as far either way it doesn't matter you come back here you spend the resources and you go out there and you try again you're gaining experience you're getting better and there's no rush to try to beat this game you can take as many attempts as you want to try to clear the game and just kind of do it at your own pace. So it's a game you can enjoy, even if this is not your strong suit. I mean, look at me. I'm terrible, and I'm st I still have a blast with this game. I've still even managed to beat this game a few times. So there's hope. All right, let's talk to our dad. Stupid boy. I told you nobody gets out of here, whether alive or dead. So how was your wanton ransacking of my domain? Well, I have to say the wanton ransacking of your domain was awesome up until the part where i got killed but i've got to practice you know greetings father my ransacking was a delight thank you for asking so i'll just be on my way again yeah that's right just just on my way be on your way indeed what do i care you shall never reach the surface go see for yourself well i will all right, so let me just poke around. So that's the desk where, you know, you could see Hades just working on paperwork with the giant quill, and it's so dis disappointing to think of the bureaucratic nightmare of running the underworld, and just this is what the gods are up to, is paperwork. I mean, what kind of Brazil, you know, nightmare and 
just to not date myself too horribly, I mean Brazil, the the Terry Gilliam film, and not the country. All right, who's this dude? Good to see you, lad. Despite the circumstances, remember your training out there. The pain of death is but another obstacle. Thanks, Achilles. I'll remember that. Then fear is for the weak. Take care, Achilles. Take care. All right. And what is this? Examine. The House of Hades. That dark and lavishly appointed lair of the underworld's king is home not just to him, but to his willful progeny. All right. You know I can hear you, old man. <laughs> I love that meta commentary, like where Zagreus is talking to the narrator. It's, it's great. Now this table of blueprints can't do anything just yet. You have come home. I have. Do not despair, child. Such setbacks are inevitable and may be overcome with effort and with time. You made contact with the goddess Athena. She shall be true to her word. All right, so here's Nyx, Knight Incarnate, and you'll notice the decoration she is wearing. She's got it on her little, I don't know, forehead tiara. I'm not sure what you call a piece of jewelry like that. And her earrings and the large uh, pendant at her neck there. You see that purple gem? We know that gem. I believe it, Nyx. I'm grateful that you put us into contact. I know you took a considerable risk in reaching out. The risk is not to me. I expected the Olympians would involve themselves in this eventually. Reveal to them no more than they already know. Are we understood? Yes, we are. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Then go. I'm not going to reveal any anything. Um, okay, so this area is locked, and you'll see this kind of inviting purple allure casting its pale glow through these incredibly decadent drapes. This is my room. My bedroom. It's off the main hall here. Hey, room. I'm back. I am back. All right. Now, you'll see how in the upper left it says, use the mirror to grow stronger. So what does that mean? That means roguelike fun. We could poke around in our bedroom. There's our awesome bed. And anything that has this kind of like pulsing um, glow orb, check it out. The bed chambers of Prince Zagreus lie in a perpetual state of utter disarray. I mean, yeah. Despite his lord and master of the house repeatedly insisting that he pick everything up. And this is the deal. At, at its core, even though I'm the son of a god, I've got special powers, I'm, you know, um, involved in the Olympian struggle, I'm still just a rebellious youth, you know, dealing with an overbearing dad um, who wants me to do something as just out of this world, at, like clean up my room. Oh, come on. It's not that bad, is it? These expectations. I mean, who does he think he is? All right. And you see this huge mirror. Uh, this, I mean, please don't judge my vanity, but yeah, I, ha I have a mirror this large that I get dressed in front of. All right, and let's see what what's going on. If you look at it with the right bumper, night and darkness guide me. Night and darkness guide me. So this is where you can spend, okay, your purple gems of joy, your teardrop plums. Your memories, your night. And these powers, I can't afford some of these down here. And I only have the choice to get four of them. So let's look at these. Shadow Presence right now is says plus zero percent, okay? And if I could buy this for ten of my twenty gems, and it says deal attack and special damage when striking foes from behind 10 percent per rank so this gives you the, the benefit of like doing more damage if you attack enemies from behind chthonic vitality says restore a small amount of hit points when you exit a chamber plus one per rank and this is phenomenal now death defiance says 
Restore 50% of your health instead of dying when your life total is depleted one time per rank. So this means instead of dying when you're on a run, you would actually come back from the dead, okay, um, one time per rank with a 50% of your health. And then greater reflex allows you to perform an extra dash, which is also great. So all of these are good. Absolutely all of these. And you can take either one of these or you can save up for Death Defiance. I'm going to take Chthonic Vitality. Um, I love it. Okay, one rank here. And I'm even going to tank one rank in Shadow Presence and just buy this. So this allows us to get 10% extra damage if we attack from behind. And now we heal one um, health per exit chamber. So every time we clear a room and go through the door we actually are going to get plus one health so it's a little bit of passive healing it's not a ton but it's better than nothing now you'll notice how after i buy an ability it, the cost increases okay so this was 10 and it goes up to 15 this was 10 and it actually doubles all right so you'll just see that pattern it's not the same scale that they increase at but it, i had enough to buy both and i will all right and then once you're done get out of here now you can spend um some keys to unlock some more talents from the mirror of night or as it says or are these just inside me and they're reflecting my internal capabilities don't know but i'm just going to go back now we're talking now we're talking indeed and we actually are stronger those benefits like i said last forever let's go through this green door okay. and Okay, indeed. Where are we? We are in the weapon selection the chamber. So in this room, you'll see that there's a sword, there's a spear, there's a shield, and there's a bow on display. But these are locked, except for the sword, unless I have keys to unlock them with. And this is where the real fun of the game also begins, because you're going to get new loadouts, new weapons that you can start with, uh, and even new keepsakes later that are relics that you can equip that give you different powers so you can really customize your run and lean into your strengths now if i go up here i can just take a look and see do this. you know first get past the retro shades of tartarus uh-huh easier said than done down done below running into meg that's the maze just beyond that's right find uh, your way up to elysium from there and after that all right Let's give it another shot. Let's do it. So there is the maze of Tartarus sprawling out beneath us. Okay. And are you ready? Let's go. Let's start a new run. Let's see if we can get further this time. All right. One more time. One more time. Boom. Thunder. Is that? It is. Now, look at this. To also help us, on your first run, you don't get access to this. But now, when you start again, you'll get a boon, like, right away. Is this really him? Okay. In the name of Hades, Olympus, I accept this message. Is this a message from Zeus? Greetings there, young man. Look, your father's always been rather difficult, and he's not so much as called in quite some time. You'll have a better home where you belong, here on Olympus. And to help you on your journey, have my blessing. Well, thank you so much. See, so what's cool about this is that now we get more gods and goddesses helping us and we get a benefit right out of the gate to make us stronger for even like the first chamber, which is ridiculous. So let's go ahead and see what we can choose between. So let's look at all of these choices from Zeus. We could take lightning strike, okay? Your attack emits chain lightning when you damage a foe. And again, this is your X attack, your light attack. And it does 10 damage. Great. Thunder Flourish is your special, which I was calling the heavy attack, but I suppose it's your special attack. And it is the Y strike, and it causes you to do um, lightning bolt strikes to nearby foes. 30 damage. And Thunder Dash says your dash causes a lightning bolt to strike nearby foes. So that's also good. Of these, okay... Um, I'm going to try Thunder Flourish. I like the fact that it does 30 damage. But if it doesn't 
we're going to have to test this. And this is what you have to do is you have to examine this and test it. It says it causes your, your bolt to strike nearby foes. If it doesn't strike the original foe and it's not adding 30 damage to your original attack, then it's not quite as strong. Um, but let's just experiment. Let's do some science. Lord Uncle Zeus lending his support. Never thought I'd see the day or night, whenever. Whatever. Whenever. All right, you'll see on the left in the diamonds that my special, the second diamond from the top, is powered up with Zeus. And if I push Y, you'll see that there's like a little lightning bolt that happens now with my special attack. All right. Now, the other thing that has changed is there are now enemies in this room. There were not before, right? But you'll see, easy, the rock fell down and crushed the dude. Composed of such innumerable, ever-shifting, interlocking chambers, the underworld of Lord Hades all but guarantees the dead shall there remain until the end of time. Good thing I'm not dead. Good thing indeed. I mean, I'm, I don't know what I am, but I'm Zagreus. All right, so these purple babies are what we're looking for um, because, you know, as we've seen, they allow us to upgrade our powers. We're trying to get 30 now to get that extra life. It's so helpful. Do not mess with me right now. Don't mess with me. All right, let's see if we can get that guy in the trap. And you see how it said trap kill? Sometimes you get a little bonus for that. Now, that was the special just hitting both of them. That wasn't really the chain lightning. But the special is so good because, especially against guys that don't have that many hit points like these skulls, it's just a one-shot kill. So I'm not bringing in Club Dude. I'm just, you know... We can bring him in now. Hit him with the cast. And see, we can use this kind of stone slab to separate us. That's 10 on our way to 30. Get our cast back. And, you know, just break some of these things. See if there's any fun stuff. There's nothing. Oh my goodness, it's the pomegranate. If you've noticed, if you've been on the channel before, um, when I first streamed this, we took this pomegranate to heart. We called it the Palm of Power. You'll notice that some of my Twitch rewards and my badges use this pomegranate. It was just a lot of fun that we had because I like the Palm of Power a good bit in this game. Now you can kind of like hide behind this post on this guy and just trick him. Oh, he knocked himself down. Oh boy, here they come. Goodness. The Palm of Power. So good. All right, let's take it. Delicious. So the Palm of Power basically allows you to level up the boons that you have. And right now we only have one. But if you had more to choose from, you would get to pick it. So what is this going to do? It allows you to level up Thunder Flourish, which is the Zeus boon we have on our special from level 1 to level 2. And you can see the green indicates the increase. So instead of doing 30, the bolt now does 42. How about that? Now, another thing that's happening is... Each exit has its own reward. Exactly. Each exit has its own reward. So we're now getting a choice for what we want. Um, unfortunately, I want purple so bad, these purple gems, but keys are going to allow us to unlock new weapons, so I have to take a key when I see it. But you can prioritize whatever you want, all right? I'm going to go for this. One key gives us the bow, for example, if we want to try playing a ranged character instead of a, you know, a sword-based character. And part of the fun of Hades is really discovering, like, which weapon you shine with. All right, now let's see where these guys are going to appear. Sometimes, okay, you can, like, take advantage. 
when you see the enemies spawn in, the size of the summoning circle, or whatever you want to call it, indicates like what type of enemy it is and you can the more you know about the game you'll know like what kind of an enemy that's about to be like these are skulls because they're so small that's what you get that's right that is what you get all right now we don't have the deflect anymore sometimes i can forget that i can think oh i've got deflect because i had it last run but we don't now a lot of the time there's the chthonic key um this can unlock something back home. It sure can. You'll see my bolt actually interacting with the environment. You'll see it doing damage as it chains to, um, you know, posts and things like that to tear apart the environment. So that's useful. Now, there's only one choice here, and it is this heart. This will give us more maximum health, which is phenomenal. I love getting more health because I'm bad, and I want to be able to take more hits. All right. So where are the bad guys? Here we go. Over here. Ow. That was less than ideal. Okay. That's what you get. That is what you get. So using the traps just getting started huh? helps us a bit. These balls we just have to kind of dodge. There we go. Oh, gosh. That is a lot of bad guys. I'll try to use the traps on this dude. There we go. We hit this guy a ton with traps. There it is. So this gives you 25 max health. So we're at 35 out of 50. It gives us 75. Um, so our max goes from 50 to 75. But it also heals you um, for that 25. So we don't heal to full, but we get the 25 as base hit points as well. Let's see if there's anything else here. Okay. So let's talk about this. We have a choice. Now the bag icon, this actually means you'll go to a shop where you can spend your um, Karens at a shop in the run to buy some consumables, some limited power-ups for this run. I don't actually want that right now because I only have 46 Karens, which you can see in the bottom right. I like to go to a shop when I have more money. So... I know this because I've played, and I'm just telling you, um, it, I know it's a little bit of a spoiler, you you just uncover it through experience, but we want purple gems right now, at least I do, because I want some of the more permanent power-ups. You'll notice you see that plus one um, green number that popped up. Remember, we do heal one hit point every time we make it through a door. If it's possible for us to heal, that is. All right. Ooh. The guy almost got us. He tricked me. I didn't think he'd be able to make it through. Oh, but he did. All right, here they come. Get that guy out of here. Oh, no. I could have done without that. All right, these guys are toast. Our special is just doing so much work for us. That was super easy. Ten... Alright, so there's money that way. Is there another doorway in here? Ah, there's not. That's a shame. Alright, fine. Break these. Let's go. Witches. Witches, indeed. Now, these are not the ultra-armored ones, so we can tear these apart with just a regular special attack. Not a chance. Now these are big boys. Uh, almost got stuck on those candles over there. My goodness. Never thought the candle would be the death of me. Hmm. 
<laughs> Take that. Coin from the dead. Coin from the dead. Now we have a lot of money, so we could easily go to a shop. There isn't one, but ooh, there's a key. Look at that statue. Looking good. Man, this was a really small room. And again, this is a procedural game, as roguelikes are. So you're going to get different rooms, different configurations each time. I don't think I've gone this far. He's saying that because this is the furthest we've ever made it. You know, knock on Chthonic keys. Take out these witches. Anything that spawns near me. I know there's witches off screen that are like hurling their magic at me, but to be honest, that's not too hard to dodge. I want to just secure this area. I don't want to have things spawning behind me, so we got to take out all of these skulls as they emerge. Just rocking our special attack. Mm -hmm. Boy. The skull shop is not closing. Got it. Now that's a key. I can use this to unlock a weapon. We sure can. All right, so now we have two keys. You'll see in the bottom right, two keys, 186 Karens. Uh, let's see. And the only door we can take is more health, but who doesn't want more health? We heal for one. Here we are. Oh boy, this this guy's elite. Okay, so remember when you see the kind of skull with the red glowing eyes and the laurel leaves icon, that's elite. He's got armor, which is the yellow bar that goes on top of his hit points. So we're just going to use everything we can to try and defeat this dude. I don't want to bring in another one right now. There we go. He was kind of stuck for... Oh, God. He did not get... The, that guy was getting staggered a little bit by my attack. This guy, not really staggered that much. Okay, this is a trap, so... Oh, man, I was going to try to trigger it and hit this guy. Darn. I'm still not timing that tramp right. Oh boy. So as you can see, I'm just being a coward and running away and just chipping at them with my special. Watch out. These guys, a lot of the enemies in the game, their range will surprise you. They're slow, but then they have, you know, much more range than uh, you might think. Alright, that guy got wrecked by the trap. Let's wreck that guy. Ooh, it's 200 damage, yeah. If we can use this environment to our advantage, it's a ton. Now, we need to get this dude... Ooh, boy, I almost got hit there. We need to get this guy in front, okay, of the trap. Ah, he's being smart about it. Stop being so wily. Oh, boy. A centaur heart. Going for a bit? I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Yes, I just eat a centaur heart, or I just replace my own heart with a centaur heart. Whatever it is, it's working. All right, so let's see. Are there choices here? Doesn't look like it. All right, so we're in a little bit of a doozy. This uh, trident, I'm sure you can guess which Olympian god this belongs to, but unfortunately, you see the upper red chevron and the elite icon there that we just talked about this means that this room is guarded by elite so sometimes you'll see choices and you'll know like oh, okay well if i want that i'm gonna have to fight elite monsters and if i'm not feeling strong i'll take an easier option we don't have a choice so we're just fighting elites uh -oh. and these ones are fast and they're gonna jump around and like throw dynamite so what we want to do is just um do our best to just be quick ourselves, dodge out of the way of the explosions, and try and do as much damage as we possibly can as quickly as we can. Taking out one, there we go, is much better because then you don't have to worry about the other dude's stuff.
Oh, he did like a super attack. He dropped three. That was not good for us. Got him. We got the backstab. You see how we got the extra damage on the backstab? It's uncle number two. It's got to be. Then, in the name of Hades, Olympus, I accept this message. I accept the message. You recognize your uncle, do you not? We have a lot of catching up to do, but first things first. You get yourself out of that dour underworld. As for me, I'll see if I can stir things up a bit to cover your advance. Cover my advance. Oh, now look at this. Now things are getting fun. So what's also really cool about the game is eventually you'll get offerings from the gods that are of higher quality than what we've been seeing. So there's rare, there's even epic op uh, options that we can see right here. There might be even better than this. Okay, so we can get Tempest Strike, which allows our regular attack to do more damage and knock foes away. Flood Shot makes our cast do more damage and knock them away. Or Ocean's Bounty, okay? And this one just gives you more rewards. 60% more rewards for gems, um, darkness. That's what the purple things are called. I had forgotten. Gemstones, darkness, or uh, Karen's coins, the obal. So this is really good to take early, Ocean's Bounty, because it will affect your whole run and just give you more. But Tempest Strike and Floodshot are things that actually just help you do more damage. Now... Um, I think I'm fine with Tempest Strike for the moment. Um, I'm using, you know, mostly my special, but this is good to just have a regular attack. And it's epic, so it's doing more damage. Usually you want to try to take epic if it makes sense, but, um, because it's a, like, you'll see that the attack damage will vary based on the rarity of the upgrade. So I'll take that one. Looks like I caught a big one. The power of the sea should be of help. And you can see, um... They got me. No way to patch up. Got to keep going. That's right, got to patch up. Now you'll notice now when we go to the options menu that you can look at your boons, okay? Um, and here's Thunder Flourish, it's level 2. And the, you'll see LV2 on the icon on the left to show you level 2, but then you can see the full tooltip in the top center there that it says level 2. Now, Thunder, uh, Tempest Strike, rather, is purple, has a little purple badge on the diamond to indicate that it's epic. And then you can even go up and see all of your, um, you know, mirror powers. Like, we have Shadow Presence and Chthonic Vitality, for example, unlocked and what level they are and what they're doing. So you can just use this to refer to, to understand what all your buffs are doing for you. So this way we can get some Darkness. Or the purple teardrop gems and let's get some more we need it we really really want to try and get 30 if we can all right so let's see what our abilities do for us oh it's a skull pile okay so the skull pile will just infinitely generate skulls until we take it down so you want to take down those piles just as quickly as possible otherwise life gets hard now there's an elite over there so there we go. Worthless. All right, I'm just kind of running around and taking out the piles first. Boom. Easy peasy. 10 darkness. And we're up to 30, so now we can buy the extra life, which is fantastic. And now we have a cool choice. Do we want money, or do we want... Well, we died the last time we went to see Dionysus, um, but we're going to go for it anyway. I'd rather have a boon than some extra money. We have 237, which is decent, but I like boons a lot. All right, there's an elite guy down there. Not happy about that, but what can we do? It says break above the enemy when you break through their armor, by the way. Got my cast back. All right, so these are definitely elites. So I'm just using this corner of this kind of blood pool to my advantage as much as I can. Ooh, he's still... Yeah, he can reach across it. I didn't move fast enough there. Ow. What a jerk. Got him on the trap. That's fantastic. Ooh, watch out for this guy. All right. Ooh, 
Now nah, that was bad timing on my part. Goodness gracious, the worst. Now you'll see how my ability knocked him back there. My Poseidon strike. So you can use that to get a little bit of distance if you want it. Uh-oh. I didn't mean to bring that guy over there. Got him. Alright, hopefully there's only one left. We're getting so low. Oh god, there's two. It's really scary. Well, if we can fight them both in a favorable circumstance, um, Zeus's bolt will hit them both. that sound that laughter sound that was revelry people having a good time well sure then in the name of hades olympus i'll accept this message we accept it hey there zag man how's it going look you have got to get here with the rest of us already we've been saving you a spot let me see what i can do make life a little sweeter for you in the meantime dionysus looks amazing all right, so these are all common abilities, but um, this ability right down here, okay, uh, Premium Vintage says gain health up whenever you pick up a Nectar. Receive one Nectar now. All right, so that's great. Your dash causes hangover. You take less damage while at 40% or below health. All of these are pretty reasonable, but Premium Vintage gives us Nectar, which is a currency that we can give as a gift to people to improve our relations with them. And I want this. I want this early. You want Nectar to give to gods, goddesses, people back at Hades Palace to boost your relationship. So we'll take it. Leave it to the God of Wine to lighten things up around here. Now watch this. I'm at 26 health, and let's go ahead and gain it. And you'll notice that it heals us. Gave us 20 max health. So you automatically get that ability, that boon, just gives you 20 max health and a nectar, basically. So pretty good. I mean, our health is very high if, if we can, you know, capitalize on it. There's a shop right here, and there's also a Poseidon buff. I love the Poseidon, the Jason Momoa kind of Aquaman Poseidon in this game. But unfortunately, I need to go to the shop to try to buy some items to heal my health. So I'm going to go in here and see if what happens. Now, one of the nice things about going to a shop, shop. besides the fact that there's cool magic, um, is that there's no enemies in here. So you're going to get into a room that you don't have to fight. Beyond the present chamber lies the outermost perimeter of Tartarus, promising terrifying dangers far beyond the underworld prince's reckoning. All right, then. And I can reckon quite a bit. That's like the Han Solo quote there. Okay, so we have 257, which means we could buy um, the Palm of Power and we could buy a Athena Boon or we could heal, um, buy this like falafel and uh, or this gyro or whatever this is with these fries and we get 48 health to heal us up which is very important because if you look at the next chamber, this is uh, a boss. So you'll see there's an elite symbol with two upper chevrons and a star. That's a boss, but the icon, the drop that we would get is fantastic. Now let's talk to our buddy. Karen says, Gah. Well, good to see you, Karen, mate. Just minding my own business, taking in the sights, and hey, what's that you got? Some sort of wares for sale? And I'll just have a look around. That's right. So he doesn't talk much. All right, I'm going to heal. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to buy um, a buff. This is a nice thing about a shop, too. Once you have enough money, sometimes you'll find boons um, or other really, really good items here that you can purchase. Just and if you have a lot of money, you can buy it all. Now, I could give... You see how there's a right trigger, give the gift of nectar, and I could give it to um, our good dude here, Karen. 
and it would boost the relationship and eventually he starts like maybe giving you discounts or more items to sell things like that for like leveling up your relationship with him but i don't want to give it to him i'm going to talk to athena i'll pay for that oh my goodness okay so it's time to get divine dash um divine dash is insane it's one of the better abilities in the game, Athena's Dash, and it allows you to kind of like have some, I believe, more invulnerability frames within dashing, or just that ability to dash and deflect helps you dodge projectiles and damage so well. So we're going to take this. Um, sure footing is great, like 90% less damage from traps, that's cool, it's epic, but I want this one. All right, the backup. and we get that right away. Now, I can't give Athena my nectar in that situation, unfortunately. You'll see my dash. You'll see how it has the Athena thing. This is one of the best abilities early in the game because it just helps your survivability so much. I'm going to keep my nectar, and I'm going to go try to fight the boss. Well, this is awkward. It is awkward. Halt, Sagrius. Not one step further. And it's Megira, first of the Furies. Come on, Meg. Haven't we had more than enough of each other by now? Besides, don't you have some place else to be? Yeah. Your father sent me. All in all, I'd rather be on your bad side than his. Now you can turn back like a good little man, or I can send you home the painful way. What'll it be? Painful way. I'll have to go with the painful way. That's it. A man after my own heart. No, wait. Now she gets in that, like, three-point football stance with her one wing, and it's scary. All right. So, you'll notice that I deflected her attack right there. Not that one. But... Ow! I got put in the blender. So this fight is really hard. I don't expect us to beat it now because we're not that powerful. But it's good to get to Meg. She's always the first boss and try to fight her just so you can learn the fight itself. And you see, we've already got her to the next phase. So she is going to start doing these abilities all over the ground, which will damage us if we're in them. Ow, that was less than smart. Oh god. I've played better. But you can see once you take her down to certain hit point levels, she ouch. She starts doing more terrifying abilities that require just, you know, you being nimble. So with this you can really just run around if you want to just kind of dodge these circles and then dash when it's necessary. Ouch, I got caught. I'm at 7 health, so this isn't good. Now, if I had an extra life, then we'd be, like, much better spot. But we aren't in that world. Ah, I didn't get out of the thing fast enough. But I want to come back. But I at least got to show you the boss. So, Meg is hard, and you need to get a little bit stronger. Now, if you're sweet oh, at the game, that, Meg. you'll wreck Meg. But um, Meg took me a while. <coughs> oh, wow. So, Megara herself got you last time. That must have been intense. It was intense. She's fast and strong and beautiful. And, um, anyway, I hope... The fates are nicer to you next time. Me too, dude. So, yeah, I hope so too. There you go. And... Wow. Look at this. We have a lot more we can do. We Some have some... The desk next to the throne. Someone at the desk. These construction dudes that we can talk to. We can talk to all these people. And we have 30 darkness that we can use to 
buy ourselves the extra life, and we have two Chthonic keys we can use to unlock some new weapons. So everyone, I think this is a good place to end this first episode of the Complete Beginner's Guide to Hades. I've showed you the controls, the UI, explained a little bit about, um, you know, some tactics, dashing and fighting and weapons and how to level up. But there's so much to this game, and I hope you're finding this to be useful. If you have any questions about the game, please post those in the comments below. I'd love to help you out. And let me know if you want to see more of this series, see me play through a little bit more of the content, explain my process, level us up so that you can get a foothold and really enjoy the play pattern, which is go out, fight, gather as many resources as you can, die, then come back, spend stuff to level up, and see if you can get further and further in that loop. Beat the first boss, you know, Megara, and then level up, level up, see if you can get into Tartarus, the next realm, um, and, or, well, you'll see what the next realm is, and move on through the game, beating new bosses, and trying to make it an escape the underworld. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Take care.